Hi, everybody. We're the Skeleton Crew, and today we are going to be talking about a man with a very long nose who is not Christopher Moltisanti. Hey, Before we- Christopher! <laughs> we are certainly not going to make that joke a lot of times tonight. Um, I wasn't going to before you said that. No, I am. Yeah, I know. Listen, do you guys want to see a theropod that can smoke a cigarette in the rain without using an umbrella? Because, boy, we have one for you. Um, we have a Patreon. Please like, comment, subscribe, support us on Patreon if you can. I'm Dr. James Napoli. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and North Carolina State University. My name is Amelia Zitlo. Please send help. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. My name is Scott Johnston. I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology, currently serving 25 to life for fishing without a license. I am Alexander Altieri Rubenstahl. I'm going to throw in that Italian because I'm going to make a lot of jokes about the Italians in this episode. My people. Uh, And I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University. I'm Dalton Meyer. And I've been struck with the thought of those pictures. It was like, what if a dog wore pants, which are pretty usually like easily solvable through homology. It was like, how would a Sukumimus smoke a cigarette? And it's like, would the cigarette be out at the end of its mouth? Or would it be like up towards the front? Um, I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University, <laughs> believe it or not. Together, <laughs> we're the skeleton crew. We're, we're the skeleton, skeleton crew. crew. Hi. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Dalton. <laughs> Dalton, what? Sukumimus turns to Aranosaurus. He was an interior decorator? His apartment. His nest looked like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch The Sopranos. It's probably the best American television series ever made. Go check it out. Yeah. Oh, my and God. And check out Look these the critters. Boy. Hi, we interrupt. Oh my god, I've defocused my video. I feel like Alex. I, oh my god. I. Oh god, the existential horror in my soul is creeping to the surface. Just I, I feel like down. there's bugs under my skin. Don't worry, um, don't, just don't think about them. I, I'm trying to cast them out of my mind because I have an important message to bring you. Um, the introduction to this video has already been one of our more chaotic and odd, and we're going to continue that because we have to make a little special announcement. Um, You may have seen our announcement video about this, you may have not, but we are going to be doing a lot of fun events in the month of October to benefit the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, and specifically the SVP Futures Grant, um, or Futures Award. Um, We're going to be doing not one, but two charity live streams to raise money to fund the Futures Award for a couple more years. We're hoping to raise $10,000 for it. The Futures Award goes to students from underrepresented backgrounds, Um, who are trying to conduct summer research. This is something that's really important for career development, Um, but summer research opportunities generally pay very little, if at all. So this is a pretty significant barrier to a lot of people who are trying to build their CVs and break into the field of paleontology. The Futures Award tries to address this. We're raising money for it. Please join us at our live streams. Our last one was a huge success. We are really looking forward to hosting more of them and trying to raise not $1,000, but ten thousand dollars, a million dollars. No, well, if we can, one yes. million dollars. Um, the winners are feeling generous. Can you exactly? Can imagine? Imagine? Somebody, can you hey, imagine a a billion dollars? No, we, 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 no, no, no. We 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 start to we do a twelve hour live stream and we get a million dollars. Yeah, I can imagine yeah. it. I think about it all the time. A more more billion dollars. Okay, um, anyways. We, so, 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 yes, anyway. Um, so we're going to be doing these live streams. We are also going to be featured as a panel at the virtual uh, SVP meeting this October. This happens in late October, a week after the um, in-person meeting that most of us are going to to present our research. Um, during this panel discussion, we're going to be talking about kind of our inspiration behind the Skeleton Crew channel, what we hope to accomplish as science communicators, all sorts of things like that. So if you're interested, we recommend that you attend our panel if you are registering for the virtual meeting. If you don't have a good time. Yeah, it's a great event. And especially if you are an aspiring paleontologist, we heavily recommend it. Um, That said, if you can't register, we totally understand. And we are told that a recording of our panel will go up on the SVP YouTube channel at some point in the future. So you will get to see it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so stay tuned. A lot of really exciting Skeleton Crew stuff is coming. Please watch this space for any future announcements about scheduling and time and schedule for uh, you know schedule events for. Our, for <laughs> go talk. Listen to us talk about Sukumimus. That's all, folks. <laughs> oh, good God. Too. Yeah. yeah, they're good little. I forget good how little good guys. sounds they make. They have to. You forget how good sounds they make. <laughs> they they have to climb up. Says out of Scott, the making <laughs> not a good sound. Making bad sounds. The Sorapelta yeah. pit. Yeah, we're back on Isla Nublar. Is this for the, the Sorapelta map. map. It's it's the same map. Yeah, it's not the same exact instance. Um, oh my god, it's so but good. But it's a good tropical map to use. And we, and I was looking at where uh, where this is from in terms of like relative to the Paleo Equator, and it's like right on the Paleo Equator. Oh, oh, wait, they're going to be cute. Oh. That's I love that really social good. animation. It's... I love that, like, if memory serves, that's based off of, like, Albatross. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also... And oh, I love yeah, that sorry. so much. It's if so cute. They, it just keeps going, it too. Like, time. it's... So, uh, the little dance they do at the end. Some, it's just... Someone cared a lot If I recall... This. Well, yeah. We do. All of us. If I recall, <laughs> no, it looks like it, they have a lot of neurovascular, right? I, I think spinosaurs have a lot of a uh, neurovascular foramen in the front of their snoots, mm-hmm. so they would be sensitive. Okay. So rubbing yeah. faces together is, you know, maybe their little way of a little, a little, a little sweet little greeting they do. Yeah, I, I love it. It, it has a real, I mean, it's based on real animal behavior, so maybe this is unsurprising, but I like the level of like, kind of, it feels like an animal. It feels like a thing you wouldn't necessarily expect out of the egg, and then when you grow them, it's like, oh, they do this cute little dance with each other. Um, you know, the the vast history of life on Earth must be rich with these little courtship displays and little social interactions that were unique to species that are completely lost to time now. Muldoon watching. I, I've always liked imagining what they might be. Muldoon mm-hmm. watching two dromaeosaurs like just kind of brush each other's face in a sweet way. They must all be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do like a little nose boop thing and then hum. It's like, like just shoot them all. There's shoot a tweet. Her. There was a tweet the other day that was like, imagine if we ever find a fossil record evidence of zoomies. Like, yes. what would that look like? Fossil trackway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just a trackway where it's walking normally, then complete, <laughs> complete chaos. And no, then walking you, you normally know, again. It, it's actually, it's making me wonder if we already have trackways of zoomies, but it's like there was a predator that came by a couple days later, so it's like, oh no, it was being chased by this thing. It was like, <laughs> no, it was animal just wilding out for no reason. <laughs> just like, it's just running around, having a good time. I, my favorite thing about zoomies is that they, uh, the unrelated stun lock counter goes up. Um, zoomies have a real scientific term. No. What? Yeah, they're called frenetic random activity periods, fraps. or fraps. Yeah, I would. Ho- I was hoping that would have a better acronym. I kind of like it, like just because fraps is kind of a funny word too. Yeah. I don't know. It no, is, but it. like I, I was hoping it would have like a really funny one, like how the the acronym for like the the long complicated science term for the photic sneeze reflex, like when you look at a light and sneeze. Do you guys know that one? Is it achoo? Yeah, it's achoo. Yeah, it's achoo, it's like autosomal, whatever, whatever. <laughs> like, it's it's very funny. Right, but a slight linguistic stun lock here. That is oh, no. not an acronym under technical definitions. It's what's oh, referred to fine. as a backronym mm. because they had achoo already and they tried to fit the thing into it Again, there's so that many. That sounds of made up. No, I've no, heard the no, word backronym, backronym before. Backronym feels like a BuzzFeed word of the year. Because it's like you're working backwards from what you want it already to be. It's... A lot of acronyms, I think, are actually backronyms, and people like just happen to choose one that sounds cool. Like the the Raptor Prey Restraint model being termed RPR, and then they're like, it's pronounced Ripper. No, it's not. I'm like, wait. We- I've never heard that. I've never Who heard anybody that? call it Ripper. Is that its government I, name? I What's going re- on? I think it's referred to as that in Denver Fowler's paper about it, which, like, oh. listen, game recognized game. It's a cool word to use yeah. to describe velociraptors eating things. You know, but I'm like, I suspect, I suspect this was not an accident. It's okay if it wasn't. 
It's like I th- how I think there's an arms manufacturer that's named Ares, and I'm like, there is no way you came upon that by accident. Shut up. Right. Anyway, so Sukumimus. <laughs> um, does anybody know what Sukumimus means? Suko being the croc part and Mimus being the mimic part. Yes. Yeah, so if you're what does the species name mean there, Scott? Never mind. Um, well, the species name is well. Dalton, did you did you want to say oh, something? Say, the su- if you're familiar with like Sarcosuchus, which means like flesh crocodile, um, Caprosuchus. Yes, yeah, Suchus is a common suffix. Dinosuchus. Well, this thing's suffix. No, that's not even the correct term. The the species epithet is what's <laughs> trying to dovetail into. It didn't yeah. work. Is uh, Teneriensis, uh, which is named after the desert in which it was found, the Tenere, um, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that accurately. I'm pretty sure that's the French pronunciation. I don't know uh, Turulig, the language it is from, but the word means desert. So it's the desert desert. Cool. Like the Librea Tar Pits. Right. To- the, lo- you mean- the, the Tar Tar right. Pits. <laughs> Right. Right. The desert desert. See also the Sahara Desert. The Gobi oh, Desert. Yeah. It it's a part of the the Tenhe Desert is part of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> right. So it's the desert desert part of the desert desert. We love this. Uh, so I was about to bring up another example of um that I've seen float around the internet a lot about Torpenhow Hill in Britain, which the etymology is supposedly that you keep adding New new languages words for hill to the name, so Tor in Old Britonic was hill, and then Pen is all is hill in Anglo Saxon, or uh, so on and so forth. So Torpenhow Hill is just hill 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 hill, but but that's not true apparently. I just googled it and it's been oh. debunked. So um, I'm spreading misinformation on my YouTube channel. Wait a minute. Okay, oh. just we're, we're yeah. I'm I'm stopping your stunlock for a second. Do these guys lay I down to drink? That. I've never that noticed so cool. that. Wait, yeah, they like sit down, put their head in the water, have a sip, and then stand back up. I love that. What? I like that. A lot. They're doing it in the background now. Oh my god, that was awesome. They look like Oppenheimer's girlfriend. Oh. Stop. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, they don't look that much like her because they don't have a black gloved hand forcing their heads underwater. Paul Serino. I tried to time that so it's... He's going to do it again. Look at this. It's good at having a sit. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, I'm going to be crazy for a moment. I wonder, I wonder, because getting water down a long mouth like that might be yeah. difficult, risk of spillage. I wonder if, like, trying to get the head low so that, I, I don't know, I mean, it seems far-fetched. I'm sure they were able to drink normally, but I wonder if that's the inspiration, like, that they might need to do it differently because their head is so goddamn long. <clears throat> well, I, I wonder if that would partially come down to, like, what exactly... What are their tongues doing? Which is like a really. Do you want to rephrase that? No. What that tongue? Like, do? so <laughs> what the, would that tongue do? Um, that, like, it, it's something that oftentimes in paleo media, like the tongues of dinosaurs are just reconstructed as essentially just kind of mammal tongues, but just like fitting the size of the skull. Like, uh, namely, the one that comes to mind is like the the scene in the kind of really weird scene in the second Jurassic Park movie that I know is based off of the scene in the first book where the T-Rex just starts licking people under the under the waterfall. And it's just very strange. And it just has a big old, like, human tongue, and it's weird. But, like, I know that there's been a lot of reconstructions more recently, giving them a whole lot more, like, birdy or especially, like, bird of prey-style tongues. They're kind of more, like, arrow-shaped and a little bit less mobile and stuff. So, like, I I bet the tongue, however their tongues are formed, whatever they look like, they would have some sort of play in how they drank. 
Well, right. Um, it's like the way mammals drink, mammals that are not us, at least like cats and dogs, right? When they're sticking their tongue in. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought it's like they're curling it back. They're actually like scooping yeah. with their tongue. But mammal tongues are really flexible relative to other animals for the most part. Because yeah, we and, suck. And, right. Well, exactly. Well, and the primitive condition for the tetrapod tongue um, is a non-muscular tongue. Right, so the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is one of the ninth cranial nerve, which is part of the original complement of cranial nerves. This is a story that if you do comparative anatomy or human anatomy or something, you're going to learn. And it's a little more complicated than people uh, make it out to be. But generally speaking, the first 10 are like kind of the the classic cranial nerves. Um, The glossopharyngeal nerve does have motor innervation, but it doesn't go to the tongue. It does sensory information from the tongue, so it carries back taste signals. Um, The muscular tongue, I don't actually know the reconstructed evolutionary history, but I think it's restricted to mammals, and it's innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. I'm sorry, not the glosso... That's the ninth. It's innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, which is what's responsible for the motions that you make with your tongue. So because you're getting two separate innervations, it is inferred, and I think it's borne out by comparative anatomy, that the motor innervation to the tongue musculature is secondary, right? Mm-hmm. If this were primary, um, the glossopharyngeal nerve would take the function on because it does carry motor fibers. This is an example of you know evolution being piecemeal and kind of the result of a patchwork mosaic of different. Places. Oh, you already said mosaic. Sorry. Yes. But cool. Um, yeah, it's cool. So, so I don't know a lot about what's reconstructed with theropod tongues, but. In reptiles in general, like the tongue is not mammalian with that kind of muscular flexibility. Um, now, squamates. We actually have talked more... about this in an earlier video. We did, didn't we? About tongue mobility. We did. Which was? Indeed. We... That was the, sh- the Mononychus video, right? Yes, but yeah, yeah. Short, short hyoids. So, in very, very brief summary, just to build on what James said. Uh, for, yeah. for for dingosaurs, unless you were going to eventually go here, but uh, no, no, you can short go ahead. hyoids uh, and low um, hyoid skeleton segmentation is generally uh, indicative of kind of low tongue mobility. So your hyoid, so they're the hyoids, the serratohyles themselves, but then also these extra elements, uh, basihyles uh, in some in some some groups, uh, and even further segmented elements behind that, and this kind of like basket. Under, uh, under here. Um, and so in birds, they're highly segmented and the hyoids are very long and birds have very wiggle, wiggly tongues. Um, dinosaurs, for the most part, have very short hyoids that lack um, complex segmentation. So their tongues were likely not particularly mobile, but but uh, pterosaurs have, very, have pretty long hyoids and some uh, additional elements so they might have had wiggly tongues. Yeah. That's, that's all and, and squamates, despite having more tongue mobility, I think it needs to be distinguished that they don't have the big, thick, fleshy, muscular tongue of a mammal. No, not really. Like, you get, like, weird sh- like chameleons and skinks and stuff that do a lot more with their tongue, but it's still not like a mammal, or it's not, it's not analogous to that at all. And, like, tongue flexibility has nothing to do with how they drink, either. Because, like, snakes don't drink with their tongues, I don't believe. Like, I know some lizards do, but snakes do not. Most squamates... Snakes go and they... Yeah, they stick their head in. Cool. Uh, Most squamates have keratinized their tongues to various degrees as well. Like, superficially, crocodilian tongues look similar to mammal tongues, but they're not muscular or mobile. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, exactly. And I think the the point I was going to make before was just that I think th- this is an area where things often get conflated, right? Where we talk about aspects of the anatomy and, you know, it's not uncommon to see discussions that might proceed like, well, dinosaur, you know, dinosaurs don't really show a complex hyoid anatomy. They wouldn't have had the muscularization present in uh, in the mammalian tongue. So they probably weren't very mobile or complex. And it would not be uncommon to see somebody that say, well, squamates have very, you know, mobile tongues, so dinosaurs might have as well. We can't really know. 
And I, I think that that's fair. Well, it's fair to but an extent. If the hyoids aren't like squamate hyoids, then they're not yeah. like... <laughs> right. It, it, well, exactly. And, and what I'm getting at is the specific construction of the mammalian tongue, where it can do all the different things it does, where, where it interacts in feeding in the way we use it and can create language. And, you know, I, I'm one of the people who can roll it like that. I don't know if all of us can. I don't think I can. Try. No. Try off camera. Just, just try and let <laughs> no, us know. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I cannot. Yeah, I, I think it is about 20% of people who can't, oh. which is interesting that it would be one out of five of us. Yeah. Follow us on um, Patreon for more tongue stuff. <laughs> tongue time. <laughs> yes, more thank tongue you. Tongue talking um, with our tongues, that's all. Um, but yeah, like um, my, my dad and one of my sisters can't do it. Um, but my mom and my other sister and I can. They will not so. be. They will not be spared in the Great Purge. Then. Hey, thank you, Alex. <laughs> um, the point I'm trying to make is that is that that remains a mammalian innovation, and so even if there were individual lineages of dinosaurs that had more complex hyoids and could do things, they're not going to be doing mammal type things with it because that requires you know enhanced muscularization. There's a lot of separate muscles in the tongue. And a cranial nerve has like reinvaded up into the tongue to supply all of those uh, muscles and give them the signals they need to act. Um, it's it's just something to keep in mind. Pursuant back to anyway. the, what inspired this discussion, a question I have that I've never observed it um, is how do birds with particularly long bills drink? What's their what's their strategy? I, I don't know if many of them actually do. Um, a lot of animals yeah. don't drink. They, they get all their water dietarily. Mm. I, I don't know that they do or don't. Like herons and other really, really um, long-billed birds are probably getting most of their water, if not all of it, just from eating fish, which are very watery. Weird. That's how I like my fish. Water, watery. Watery. right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, um, in the wild, this is actually something I've learned recently. Never mind. No, I'm no, sorry. I, I just, I'm stuck on, no, yeah, like, like, I like my fish wet. <laughs> like, what? Like, sure. Ma'am, ma'am, I did not say I like my fish wet. No, I know. That was the thought that came to me. Oh. Because, well, I don't know. Oh, my God. I moved, like, two inches. Why am I out of focus? I'm going to just go on with my thing. Yeah, go on this with your thing. This is something... It's not restricted to animals that eat aquatic prey. Mm -hmm. um, in the wild, cats drink very little, um, especially small-bodied cats. This is why, and this is something I've learned recently, um, I'm glad I know now, um, domestic cats don't really have a very strong drinking drive, many of them, because in the wild, the wild cats that we domesticated them from would have gotten basically all of the water they need to survive from their diets. Um, and now... People tend to feed their cats, you know, pe different people feed their cats different ways, but cats that eat a, a diet of almost only hard food don't get nearly enough water. And it's very common for domestic cats to die of kidney disease. That's, in, you know, incurred by the fact that they're basically chronically dehydrated for their entire lives. Um, it's not something that's well publicized. I only bring this up because I think that the idea of an animal just not drinking water sounds kind of wild and far-fetched and sounds like something that would only be found in like you know animals adapted for severe desert environments or something like that but something as familiar as a domestic cat one of two of them may appear in the background of this video at any point it, it could happen it could I happen say, to you uh tell um, all that to this one back over there uh because he is a water fiend and if you ever have a water cup he will be attempting to drink out of it he we'll see <laughs> My idiot has a different problem where he's managed to spill every water vessel I've tried to give him. And so I had to buy an unspillable <laughs> water bowl, which so far has give been successful. Minute. But, like, he needs to know what is under the water bowl. And it doesn't matter if there's water on him or my floor every day. Well, I mean, thank God he's got water. Uh, yeah. Right. What my family does with our cat, um, a cat that I love very, very dearly, um, is we actually, when we feed her soft food, we actually mix water into it, so it's kind of like a slurry, and it, it tricks her into 
drinking water because otherwise she would not. She just I've heard has that's no recommended, interest. especially if you're feeding yeah. dry food, is wet it first. Yeah. Um, like soak it. I mean, she gets a variety of everything, but anytime it's a can of the wet food, there's extra water added, so it's really, really loose. Yeah. Um, I use it to anyway. rinse the can and then pour it in, and there you right. go. Besides drinking the water, what are these guys doing well, in all this water? Why they got so much of it? it. Why, the, why the long face? There you go. They, they, they like the beach. Look at look at those beach boys Fish. hanging out. Their, their job is beach. Yeah, they're fishing. They're having a great time. Now they're gonna they're gonna go home. They're gonna crack open a cold one, put on a fish S fry for all the neighbors. Sukumimus want him. Fish fear. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're they're beach boys. They are not from Wisconsin, Amelia. <laughs> they're fishing. <laughs> they're not putting you out a fish, fish fry. At the beach. <laughs> you can you swim at the beach. You can, You could sure, but you swim at the beach. You go fishing. They're they're clearly fishing. They're in the woods. And if they're not if they're not having a beer, then what are they doing? Then what the hell are they doing? Yeah, it's a nice summer day. They're gonna go back. They're gonna. It's it's about. 12 15 p.m so someone has said hey it's afternoon we can drink and there's a cooler and some lawn chairs it's five o'clock somewhere yeah. rest in peace king <laughs> i so skeleton crew viewer you may be interested to know that dalton s floated a message in the group chat earlier today that said why don't we try to only talk about <laughs> super minus <laughs> and and we were all like good yes idea. that would be a good idea <laughs> Here we are, <laughs> an extended oh. diatribe. Uh, all of you make comments. You're all like, oh, the skeleton crew goes off topic. I hope you understand. We have no power over this. We can all <laughs> sit down and agree that we won't. And then seconds later, we're talking about Sukumimus hosting a fish fry in Wisconsin. I didn't say Wisconsin. God, why It you... was implied by hosting a fish fry. I'm sorry, what else could it be? Minnesota? Maybe. Wisconsin is actually, the only place that actually fries fish. That That is true. Wait, is it really? No! I'm, no. Being no, 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 I'm, not, I'm sorry. Usage of fish fry as a I description think, uh, for fish and chips. I know... I'm just, now I, I'm wait, wondering I I know I have how to know. far... Is, is this a description of the food, fish, and chips? <laughs> or is it an event where you go and gather everyone and you fry fish? Both. So it's fish and it's fish and chips, but it's very oh good. Now I get to tea. I, I taught this to James a little. Okay, so a fish fry is usually like held that. in a church basement or a bar, and it's typically it's fried fish with sometimes if, it's, if you're in a real German part of the state, you'll get a piece of rye bread, some coleslaw, Oops. some applesauce, sometimes potato pancakes. Okay, it's good. It kicks uh, ass. Fish fry. I like seeing Dalton respond the exact same way. I don't like applesauce. You, you, you well, had me with some things. You lost you like me at the applesauce. applesauce. Applesauce goes with potato pancakes. I know, yeah. Yeah. That's why. Okay, yes. If you are, so let me be clear. Thing? You only get... You only... Huh? Isn't that a Jewish thing? Like, latkes with sour, sour cream or applesauce? Or am I... Is that a German thing? Well, that could thing be that part of Europe. Yeah. No, yeah. So it's a German thing. Potato, potato... We call them potato pancakes. They're basically the same thing with applesauce. So you only get the applesauce if they are okay. giving you potato pancakes. But you're not always getting those. That's like... If you're, like, real out in the boonies at a bar or at the church. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. But rye bread, like marble, a slice of marble rye and coleslaw is almost always accompanying the fish. And it's sometimes cod, but it's the Midwest, so there's also sometimes like perch or Oh, God. Or You're getting whatever. cod in the Midwest? It's good, yeah. No, that's Ta like, that's ta like... <laughs> takes a while to get there. Yeah, sure, I'm sure it's fine. Whatever, I grew up on it, and I believe <laughs> I turned out okay. But that is the most no, common, unless project. you're like... <laughs> yeah, <ish. laughs> but you also then would, like, if you were to yeah. order fish and chips at a restaurant, you would call it a fish fry? Yeah. They usually list it as fish fry, oh. yeah. Like, unless it's, like, a bougie that's, restaurant uh -huh. that's trying too hard. But here's the... You don't, you don't order it at a restaurant. You order it at, like, a supper club or a bar. Or it's, like, an event at the church. Or there's a fast food chain called Culver's, and their fish fry kicks ass. I do ass. like Culver's. They do it with cod. Okay. But but the the, we, the the frying of the cod is it's like a fish and chips, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is right, the we'll same. It is just Sorry. called fish fry. Yeah. Jimbo seems distraught. I don't think I can move on from the word supper club. I'm going to need to ask about You've that. You've never one heard too. of a supper club. <laughs> it's like 
Yeah, seriously. No. I'm, I'm going to hear that. Oh, my God. Okay, well, this is, we're, we're getting too far off track, so I won't go into that, but I'll try to explain now, that to you later. a sucker club? Which, we'll explain that when you're older. Well, let's get back to the sucker club. Yeah, yeah. Suko club. Suko club. To the sucko club. <laughs> normally, you, that's worse. That's way worse. When we don't talk about the animal this much, it's because we hate it. This is not the case here. We're just in a mood. No. Yeah. Also, we've um, been explicitly informed that we're not allowed to speak about. So we have to think of other things to speak about in regards to this animal. Well, so I'm going to go with what Scott was trying to lead into too long ago. I don't even remember the what fish. that was. Um, fish eating. Maybe why, it was why the long face? Yeah. Well, why they're in the water, why they're wet. And why, yes, and why they're in the water and all that. A Sukumimus walks into a river. A fish says, why the long face? It dies. It, there was no <laughs> more fish. It says, ah, ah, I'm being no, eaten. He, yeah, no, like, honestly, I picture them doing that that incredibly upsetting thing that grizzly bears do where they'll just, like, peel the skin off of a still-living fish while it's, like, gasping for air. And it's like, that's probably one of the worst ways that an animal could die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet that not that we that support guy predator who got those grizzly bears. Oh, yeah. You know that must have been bad because even Werner Herzog was just, like, you should destroy the recording of that. This is a if Werner Herzog says captured. that this is up, then like, but, oof. Yeah, he listened to it. He was like, you know what? You should you should get rid of that. Uh, Nobody so should you, ever hear that. That's, uh, you know, I only very recently found out that Werner Herzog re- apparently recorded audio for the one of the worst dinosaur documentaries. Oh, Dinotasia. oh, uh, Dinotasia. Yeah, I've seen his narrated version of it. Huh. Um, it's weird. The best dinosaur. <laughs> narration that he's ever done can a penguin go mad <laughs> is it possible for a penguin to in, in, incredibly insanity? cool take dinotasia and dinosaur evolution have the coolest dinosaur designs of modern paleo media pretty cool. yeah, yeah, the, yeah and i like that it's violent but i just couldn't get into it it was hard to find to watch i i think it's it yes, is hard to find i i think it is a Bad documentary with good designs. Yeah. Um, but. Is Sukumimus in it? Sukumimus, no. But Sukumimus is in the water right now. And what we're <laughs> all addressing is the fact that Sukumimus is a piscivore. It eats what fish. What does that mean? <laughs> it eats fish. It, it only eats people who are Pisces. We're all safe. Yes. Actually, I don't know. Um, so, so, yeah, Sukumimus is a piscivore. Um, eats fish. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other things about He's got him. Conical teeth. Um, well, for okay, we well we yes, can say does. one of the, one of the things that Alex brought up earlier uh, when we were talking about them nuzzling and stuff like that that they have a lot of like sensory Ooh. receptors around the ends of their snout and stuff. And one of the things that I think is really cool and a just an amazing attention to detail feature of the animations of these guys. Oh, and he's doing it on command. Is that the way that they fish is they actually stick their snouts in the water with their jaws slightly open and just sit still for a minute until they feel the ripples of the water or a fish bump into them. And then they're able to incredibly quickly snap shut and grab that fish. It's similar to how crocodilians uh, fish. And like, not from the the water, admittedly, but. Well, not from the edge of the water, admittedly, because these guys were were. We'll we'll talk about it later, but these guys were probably like wading fishers, kind of like uh, herons and stuff like that, but writ very large. Uh, but other than that, like the, even though this is a speculative behavior that we're seeing depicted in this video game, that is probably pretty accurate as to the actual behavior of this real animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it seems perfectly plausible to me. Less plausible is the fish that um, just well, let's, out there. Before we go... But, uh. <laughs> before we go into this animal's... More, more into this animal's ec- ecology and... Well, no, actually, mostly just the ecology, because what species it lived with is also its ecology. Ooh. My bad. Let's talk about its phylogenum. Now, I know everyone is upset and mad at Dalton for doing such a bad job with uh, <laughs> with Sauropelta's phylogenum and apparently saying 
a name wrong. Don't worry. Papa <laughs> Alex has you. Up. It's time for me to replace poorly uh, supported trees that change every time we look at them. Um, <laughs> this is a spinosaur. <laughs> so, yes, very good, Scott. This is a spinosaur. As evidenced by its evident spine. <laughs> This is no. the only dinosaur that has a spine. That's why they're called that. Very it's, good. It's the it has only a spine vertebrate. Of There's only one vertebrate in the world, and it's Suchomimus. Um, No. <laughs> I think Amelia's so, uh, this is one of the more early diverging... Oh, it was. thank you. I wasn't paying Sorry, it. go no, on, no. Alex. Just just restart the bit. <laughs> this is a Spinosaur. Um, and within the game, it is one of the more early diverging theropods. Uh, a little closer to birds than, say, something like a ceratosaur or coelophysis, but still way down the tree. Um, we talked about Meg Megalosaurus, or Megalosaurus, if you will, in one of our other videos. I don't remember how long ago it was. Time is a lie that God invented to make us sad. Now, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so in kind of the traditional <laughs> conception, um, Megalosauroids are Megalosaurids and Spinosaurids. Um, and for in many analyses, they are found to be related to each other and to be the most uh, the, the the first major diverging group of tetanurin theropods. So these generally are things with three fingers on their hands um, and a specific morphology of the tail that allows for this kind of classic, nice rod-like tail. We like that rod-like tail, ladies and gents. Now, there is some controversy. Uh, Recently, with in, in the paper describing asphalt asphaltovenator, right? Asphalt, yeah, something like asphalt. Yeah. I, oh no! Oh no! We're not doing this. We're not doing the asphalt bit. We'll, maybe later. Don't worry. Um, what? No. Okay. We're not okay. doing that. <laughs> Shut up. You don't understand. Anyway, um, yes. So in more recent, in some recent uh, phylogenies, however, it has been found that megalosaurs uh, may be closer to allosaurs and carnosauria and spinosaurids appear to be the first diverging group of tetanurans, which is very weird because they are very weird. And their fossil record starts in the early Cretaceous. And they evolved almost certainly in the early Jurassic. And we're missing like 50 million years of these things. Um, it's unclear, you know, how, how you know, what the early ones probably looked like other early tetanurans, but something's happening I mean, at the end of the Jurassic where these things suddenly just start popping up. And maybe it, in, and it, it might be that they are evolving to eat fish. So now they're living just in rivers and on coasts. And so when they die, we get their fossils. And maybe before then they were just living somewhere else and we never find them. Or perhaps they're unrecognized in the fossil record because we don't really know what the early one would look like beyond it would be like an early tetanurin. Anyway. But Alex, yes. like does their fossil record really start in the early Cretaceous? I mean, we have like Ostafricosaurus in I the late Jurassic. Was, I, I think the more recent analyses of, of that put place it as a ceratosaur. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I know that like teeth, teeth, right? from the middle Jurassic. If, if I don't, if, if I don't reference this spinos, air quote spinosaurid tooth tax on my other, my other spinosaur friend, Alex, unrelated, will get mad at me. So, Alex, yeah. this is your shout well, out. I, this is not to disparage people who do teeth work, but if you don't have a body fossil, I don't <laughs> care. It, it, well, you you, like you got to have at least 5% like of not... a skeleton if it's a dinosaur for me to be like, yeah, I guess that's real. And like in this case, a tooth is not helping us understand what the whole animal looks like. Yes. What I find interesting and bizarre is that despite the fact that they are living in and where the fish live, their fossil record is still as a whole for a group pretty crappy. Yeah. yeah. They're big. It, they're, it might be. Yeah. Well, that would usually help in well, fossil I mean, settings. I don't know. Marine. It depends on the marine setting, right? Like if you're living yeah. in a river... The, Maybe well, that's tricky. Like I, I mean, guess they're, they're not giant though. Well, minus. <laughs> right. Well, right. Like Baryonyx is coming from a locality that seems to preserve large animals, and it's. I think there's one Baryonyx, although there are a lot of other 
bits of spinosaurs mm-hmm. from Europe. Mm-hmm. And then the yeah. irritator is big for compared to the other animals from its environment. Yeah, it, it that's a good point everything though. else that's in a, its that's environment a is a terrible issue. Yeah. And fish. I was, I was thinking about that today. Yeah, like, and you fish. think like yeah. yeah, fossils form in the water and these guys live in and near the water, but they don't form that many fossils. No, yeah, good point. Anyway, so spinosaurs, uh, maybe sister to megalosaurs, I defer to that one more out of just tradition than any good reason. Uh, which it also, is not a good reason to do anything, but I also have not looked into it particularly closely recently. Sorry. Well, I mean, I was just going to say, I think the Megalosaur sister taxon link is pretty plausible looking. Um, especially, I'm going back to the Asphaltovenator paper because okay. I want to see where they got a couple of specific taxa. Sure, certainly. I think they get a Monolophosaurus um, and Carnosaurus mm-hmm. too in that analysis. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's a little you know, Rauh- Rauhut and Diego Paul are both very good anatomists, and I do trust them. Um, and I think some of the more heterodox results could just be attributed to it being a fairly new matrix. Um, sure. Interesting. Okay, so the taxon, to my knowledge, that has usually linked megalosaurs to spinosaurs is Eustreptospondylus. Mm-hmm which has like a kind of expanded anterior end of the denary a little bit like it 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 looks in some ways like it is uh foreshadowing the condition in spinosaurs um rauhut and paul um they find eustreptospondylus as being nested within megalosaurs Mm -hmm. in their analysis so they're not getting it on the spinosaur side of the split okay so that could be respond. Now I, I don't know what characters are responsible for that. I don't have time to dig into that while we're recording a video, but it could be that moving Eustreptospondylus up the megalosaur tree winds up changing the optimization on the characters that would have otherwise linked spinosaurs into being their sister group. Interesting. Yeah, um, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. I haven't studied it, like fossils of any of these animals firsthand, but I don't know. Yes. What? No, I was just thinking of an early stage in our careers and Taft and something that was almost, that almost happened. That was very annoying, but we don't need to talk about it. We don't have to. I remember the early stage of Taft where I spent about a week, um, Crying, scoring Eustreptospondylus from the monograph on it in a matrix that really wasn't designed to handle the anatomy of a basal to tetanurin. Yeah, I remember hearing about a possible romantic trip to go look at the material, uh, and I remember having to talk the gun out of. My mouth. I, I remember you calling me while I was in the grocery store with my mother, uh, because well, we had to talk about it. Yep, that was so fun. Uh, Anyway, I also remember sending you a vaporwave meme that was uh, that just said "fuck you, Streptospondylus" <laughs> about halfway funny. through the character list. Because James, we had please tell 18- me you still have that. Please tell me uh, you still uh, have that. If, yeah, if it was in like most of, of our course. conversations are on Messenger, there's a good chance. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it up right now. Okay, I'll send wait, it in the I group got, chat. I got, so we just got to finish. Happens. So there's Spinosaurids. <laughs> they show up in the early Cretaceous. Um, they persist until about the middle Cretaceous. As our current understanding, uh, the the famous Spinosaurus being one of the latest surviving Spinosaurs. Um, and there appears to be two major groups within Spinosauridae, the Baronikin, Baronikines and the Spinosaurines. Um, one right. being the group of things like Baryonyx and Suchomimus, and the other being the group of uh, things like Spinosaurus, Ichthyovenator, and I also, I, I think also, um, irritator, irritator think, too, yeah. which is interesting, uh, in that, that one's kind of, you know, you often think of it more along the lines of a baryonyx, but it appears to be more closely related to Spinosaurus. No. I think there's also an interesting bit of distribution, like, right? Cause the baryon, baryon, baryon Nikenes, I think are like this European and Northern yes. African group. And the Spinosaurians appear to be a South American, like South Southeast Asian and Very African group, which yeah. distribution. 
Yeah, perhaps. Barry, yeah. That, I mean, it might speak to, you know, there are biases in the fossil record. We say it a lot. Maybe it's a real distribution, but it's, it's, it's something worth uh, keeping in mind and, and speaking about. Anyway, so yeah, that's the split. That's the phylogenum. I, I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of phylogeny. It's maybe worth... If I said something wrong, it's not my fault. The trees change a lot, and they probably changed since we recorded this video. Because they're yeah. spinosaurus. It's, it's maybe worth sure. noting cool. um, briefly that Sucumimus itself very often recovered as the, the sister to Baryonyx, to the point where it's been proposed uh -huh. to be a species of Baryonyx, a proposal I don't align myself with, and I don't know if there's more justification mm -hmm. than they're just sister taxa, um, but it has been proposed. Here's my issue with that. One of them lives in Europe. The other lives in North Africa. The other one also lives in North Africa 25 million years yes. after the other one. Again, I don't endorse this. You can call them a different... I think it's all right. I defer to Dalton's conception of a genus in this, in this state, in this case, where it's maybe useful when you're talking about things separated by geography or time. And especially Dalton. I mean, we are, we are all radical Daltonists here. I am a radical Daltonist. I'm a card-carrying Daltonist. Yeah, based radical Daltonist. I found the Eustreptospondylus vapor wave meme. I'm sending it in the in our group chat <laughs> so that whoever has the fortune of editing this can pop it on screen. Yes. Oh, this is great. This That's is gonna, this is gonna fuck. Brilliant. This is gonna whiplash me back to a dark time. <laughs> I really like the distribution of Eustrepto and Spondylus in this. Yeah, and that E font is awful at the start. It's like three of it. Strepto. <laughs> yeah, seeing it really takes me back to a to a, a very, very bad time in my life. It was COVID. Everything was shut down. Um, it was rough. We were... It was a bad time to try to be a systematist. <laughs> I got laid like, off. Yeah, Scott was fired. <laughs> I was scoring you streptospondylus. Those are equivalently bad things. <laughs> so yeah, spinosaurs are, are interesting. I find, I find them an interestingly uh, frustrating group, right? Because they've, like, spinosaur material is not uncommon. Like we said before, spinosaur teeth are common enough in Morocco that you can buy them anywhere for like five bucks oh yeah so often yeah i mean i think i might still have a few they were gotten for me as gifts when i was a kid yeah you know like they're just they're, they're really 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 inexpensive um because they are that abundant um but most spinosaurs are known from very little material have we talked about reparovenator and no, ceratosucops I mean, I mean, I kind of like hinted at their existence save no. those for yeah i i think yeah. that's a good idea I just, one of them, well, they are both very closely related to Sucumimus, apparently. So, okay. I, th I think it is, so we, we referenced before the fact that, like, Barry and Ikeens are only known, I'm sorry, hold on. Barry and Ikeens are only known from, uh, like, North Africa and Europe, but Sucumimus is, to my knowledge, the only one known from North Africa. I think so. Well, I guess. Right, the rest of them less, are. Um, unless Christatosaurus sorry, yeah. is. A suku, like a very unikeen and is valid because it might just be right. Sukumimus, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, why is that not on this phylogeny? I guess because it's not always thought to be valid, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's it's also like traditional spinosaurus. It's known from nothing. It's it's a little bit of a premaxilla, a little bit of a maxilla, a little bit of a denary, and two, two like early dorsals. Yeah, right. You get like you get enough to know it's a spinosaur, and then not oh, and a claw. Else. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if Christatosaurus is valid, that's a second one. But it is interesting that the group really is almost only known from Europe. Right, and in um, and the closest relatives of Sucumimus are thought to be Ceratosucops and Reparovenator, which were recently named. They were both named in the same paper, and they're actually known from pretty substantial remains in um, that were found in Britain. Right, we've for got bone cases yeah. for both of them. Yeah, like they're yeah. they're good specimens. Um, 
it's just it's a weird it's a weird thing with their fossil record. I've never seen a satisfactory explanation. Right? They're large enough that they should have like an Allosaurus or Tyrannosaur like you know yeah, yeah, record at least in some ways. Right. They're living in the depositional environment. Right. And they live in the depositional environment. I also and, and I, yet I, they're always gone. I do just want to say because I'm looking at the skeletals right now of Ceratus Cops and Repairovenator. What we just said was really good for a Spinosaur <laughs> is a bit of a brain. Yeah, yeah. Ca- it, like, th- this is nothing. This is a nothing animal. Do we have the tail of this <laughs> like, guy? Of Suchomimus? Not a full Something. tail. Of Suchomimus, not a full tail. Do we have we, any... We, than, uh, of, do we have any... I think you'll get... Do we have neural spines of the tail? For Repairovenator, there are... A, there are like a couple. Um, Ceratosuchops entirely lacks them. I want to just amend Scott's For Suchomimus, there's one. Right. And they do not appear to be no. tadpole-like. Sorry, two. There's one complete one, it looks like. But yes, right. James, and, an- amend my statement. Well, I mean, so looking at the skeletal drawings is a little bit misleading because both of them are known from brain cases, yes. which is a pretty complex yes. and diagnostic region of the anatomy. No, no, no. So, I, I, so like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, like, like we definitely know that these animals are real and that these animals are distinct and in, in, like, we know enough about these animals to say concrete things about them. But it was us marveling at, like, these are well known. Com- like, we know a lot about these animals is not that we have a lot of them. We just have diagnostic bits of them, rather. And that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, now, this gets to something I had wanted to mention. So, um, viewers of our channel are probably aware that the Accursed One has a lot of debate surrounding it right now. In fact, our first video we ever published, you should all go back and watch it so that we get ad revenue. Um, We talked a lot for about an hour, amazing, I know, about a new paper that had come out about the swimming abilities of Spinosaurus. Mm -hmm. Um, And this paper was in many ways a response to an earlier paper that was led by... um, friend of the channel, Matteo Fabri, who is, uh, I always refer to as me and Alex's scientific big brother because he was yes. kind of a half generation above us and uh, made me, tr- I was tremendously influenced by Matteo early on and tremendously afraid of him and his scientific power <laughs> um, early on and now because, you know, it's like an older brother thing. It's like you can do any, you know, you can do a lot. You will never be quite as cool as your big brother. Um, this message brought to you by oldest sibling <laughs> gang. Um, anyway Matteo had uh, has been involved with a lot of the papers about the accursed one Um, but his paper that he led recently is discussing the long bone histology and the fact that Spinosaurus has pachyostotic bone which is commonly associated with adaptation for diving in, uh, in extant vertebrates and the idea that they float in the paper is that Spinosaurus is a subaqueous forager. So regardless of its exact predatory strategy, it's hunting in the water column. It's, it's well, feeding swimming. underwater. It's swimming after things. Right. Um, now, there's a lot of scientific back and forth about it. We will eventually have to talk about Spinosaurus on this channel. And when we do, you know, we'll talk about it. Um, but what I think is worth noting is that in their analysis they find baryonyx as also having pachyostotic bone but they find spina or suchomimus as lacking it um now spinosaurus explain what that is really quickly yes i will pachyostotic (laughs) bone is uh when the when the medullary cavity is almost entirely lost and so the bone is very is solidified internally right in some animals you almost completely eliminate it so it's just solid bone all the way through the uh, long bone. In this case, I think they're looking at the femur. Um, And pachyostosis essentially serves as ballast. So the animal's making its skeleton more heavy. Um, Now, their analysis shows that baryonyx and and, uh, spinosaurus are both, you know, subaqueous foragers. We know that spinosaurus has a tadpole-like swimmy tail. We do not actually know the tale of Baryonyx. There are a couple of isolated caudal centra. We don't know if it had the same kind of paddle adaptation. Um, We do have bits of the tale of Suchomimus, and we have bits of the tale of Repairovenator, and neither of them show 
this kind of paddle-like adaptation of the neural spines. And so it seems that there's consilience between, you know, the group that is not showing or, or the individual taxa that are not showing adaptations for diving in the pachyostosis of the skeleton also don't seem to have a tail specialized for propulsion. This, um, it's it's that's very interesting. interesting, especially because it makes me think of something. When I was researching the Elraz formation, which doesn't have that much published on like the sedimentology that I could find, um, to make the enclosure for the for the Sucumimus is here. Um, one of the things it discussed is that I didn't make this a braided river because it's not a braided river. It seems that these are decently fast moving rivers that Sucumimus was found in. There's a lot of cross bedding, which is a sedimentological feature where you'll see like the beds of sediment. And then you'll see in between them at an angle, these kind of secondary smaller beds. And these result from the formation and destruction of little essentially underwater dunes as the water flows. Um, and so Sucumimus seems to have been living near at least, not, probably not like rapids, but decently quickly moving water. Now, I don't know the comparative sedimentology of things like the Accursed One and Baryonyx, um, but it would make sense for something that's living in faster water like this to maybe not necessarily be swimming in it as much, or to the same extent as a, a slower, more, more placid body of water. A lake placid, if Indeed. you will. What that also means is that Sukumimus, as depicted here, is incredibly accurate to the animal as it's known. It's also, like, <laughs> um, until, like, the neotype of the Accursed One, and uh, not debate around that notwithstanding, pretty much the best known Spinosaur. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I mean... Well... I think that that's almost wait, on wait, a yeah, Sukumimus? Right? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, Irritator. No. Irritator's known from more material than Sukumimus? I think Irritator is known from... A skull. Actually, hold on now. What is, is it just that there's no postcranium? Right, never mind. And it's just the back half of a skull. Well, it's it's most of the skull. It, well, it depends on if you lump in Gatorama into there as it's, well. It's most of the skull. You get the maxilla, you get the entire palate, you're missing, like, the very tip, but... You got you, it's most of the skull, but I had forgotten that there's no postcranium, in which case Dalton is totally correct. Yeah, and I mean Sukumimus. There's a, I mean, it was finally illustrated recently in one of the. It's kind of buried in a paper on the Moroccan material, but there's a beautiful articulated cervical vertebrae mm -hmm. series. Ooh. Like it's like the whole neck is just all together, and the um, the, uh, the hold up. There's a possible referred postcrania that includes a partial pelvis, some sacra, and some caudals for irritator. Um, it's a different specimen number, but it, like, yeah. But it could be irritated. Well, case, could be. I mean, e even then, I, th I still think Dalton is right. That I mean, I'm looking at the, like the skeletal for Sucumimus is that's pretty good. It's what I, it's what I always picture in my head when I think of like, oh, we not, we have a lot of material for Baryonyx, yeah. right? And then I'm looking right. up, and then I'm like, oh no, we don't. <laughs> I'm thinking of Sucumimus. <laughs> not as much. Yes. Yeah, and, and also the El Raz formation has like. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. preservation. Oh yeah, well, right. Hey, like, what else lived there? Segway. Oh my god. So what <laughs> lived in the El Raz formation? Well, a friend. I and I say as if I didn't have the answer up in front we'll of me. See later for certain. Yes, we we might see at least one in this episode to see how it would fare against a land-based prey item. Ooh, that might be a good idea. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so there's a number of crocodilians. There are some turtles and fish and everything. Um, you won't believe sharks. this. There are <laughs> hibernant sharks. Um, there's there's but, fish in the water? Yeah, uh, oh my god, hibernant shark teeth in a freshwater oh Mesozoic god. terrestrial <laughs> ecosystem? There's also uh, fish in the Sucumimus. So many. There oh, yeah. are a lot of fish in the Sucumimus. Um, and this then bed, there's this uh, long face can fit so many fish in it. Then there's a couple of ornithischians. There's Elrazosaurus and Lurdusaurus, and Lurdusaurus is a weird one. Oh yeah. man, I I kind of wish it was in the game. Big, yeah, that'd big be cool. Chungus. Yeah, 
the the hippo convergent air quotes like ornithischian super cool i think it's in it's in another dinosaur game i think it's in that beasts of bermuda game it is yes and that is that's a fun animal that we don't see enough in paleo media it's it's a very unique niche that we don't see ever i don't think there's another one can you put it in the chat because i've yeah. never heard of this oh it's fun i'll throw it in there i got it james keep going yeah um so there's that there's oranosaurus which we're um going to do in this series at some point so i don't want to belabor that but it's a big sailed um uh, iguanodontian of some sort um and then there is i navigate back to the web to the list a bunch of cool theropods there's Aphromimus, which is a noosaur. Or an ornithomimosaur, but probably a noosaur. Or an ornithomimosaur. It's like probably a noosaur. Um, there are some very coolly named large theropods. There's Aocarcaria, which is a carcarodontosaurid. And there is Cryptops, which is an abelosaur. And there's Suchomimus. And then uh, the last thing that's listed... Uh, for the Elraz formation is the sauropod Nigerosaurus, which we'll also see in this game. Um, with the, you know, with Nigerosaurus, we don't say why the <laughs> long face. We say why the wide face. That's the Elraz formation. A lot of these animals are known from really, really exceptional specimens. Yeah. How much of Aphromimus is there? Not a lot, right? Um, I don't know. Coddles and a right hind limb. Hot dog. <laughs> oh, this this guy also would have been. I don't. Well, it's not from the same formation, but this guy also would have been a contemporary with like, like Caprasuchus and stuff, right? Uh, uh yeah. Same country, anyways. Caprasuchus. Maybe. Is also Hold on, I gotta look that up. That's embarrassing. I should have known that. No. No. I think Caprasuchus is Cenomanian. Caprasuchus is Cenomanian. But it was it was oh, contemporaneous. I am a fool. In time and space with Sarcasuchus. God, that's such a nice skull. What a cool animal. What a cool animal. Yeah. Oh yes, it is. It is with Sarcasuchus, which um, gives us one of my favorite pieces of paleo art. I, I absolutely love that that piece by Julius Chutney of the. Sukumimus being attacked yes. by the Sarcasuchus. Oh, that's a that, yeah, classic image. Mimic this, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. Or uh, there's another one. I, I forget exactly who it's who it's by, but it's reversing the it's it's flipping the script on that, and it's a Sukumimus like throwing around a little baby Sarcasuchus <laughs> by the head. Observant viewers may notice there is more to say about this group of dinosaurs than we have talked about here. And fret not, we will get to as much as we possibly can, but there are two other Spinosaurs in the game. One of which will almost certainly have a two plus hour video. And the other one is ugly as Oh yeah. Um, And so we'll probably talk about all the (laughs) ancillary things about Spinosaurs instead of talking about it. Well, yeah. Speaking of talking about the animal that we have on screen right now, why don't we talk about its actual design a little bit before we yeah. pop into the species viewer and actually rank it? Yeah. So, so speaking of Julius Chutney, he figured out the canonical real color um, of Sucumimus. So he did. He did. He went back in time and visualized it. It's not. Um, Dalton, uh, we'll find have it. to do it in the species viewer because none of them got uh, produced. So, um, for those viewers who may be unaware. When Jurassic World came out, they made a whole website for Jurassic World. And for most of the animals on the website, the depiction was just a render of the, you know, the graphics model that was being used by ILM for the movie. But for a couple of species that they put in, they had paleo artist Julius Chutney make a new reconstruction. Which is why a couple of the animals in this game have a like remarkably different design ethos than anything else, either in the game or in the movies. Um, and Sukumimus is one of them. Um, I think it's the first one we've done, yeah. right? Because the others are Montosaurus. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can we can save that for when we do others. Yeah. Yeah. Metricanthosaurus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he did Baryonyx, and then they oh. ruined it. 
God, his baryonyx is one of the prettiest baryonyx reconstructions I've ever seen. It's my favorite. Oh, yeah, they butchered him. Look how they massacred my boy. Um, yeah, so I, I think this design is just flawless, honestly. Yeah. There, I genuinely have, like, no criticisms about the actual design of it, minus, like, slight things that we can't know at the moment. Like, I was saying beforehand, hey, maybe the tail's a touch short. And then James pointed out, we don't have much of the tail. I was like, well, if we're constructing it off of other Spinosaur tails, and James is like, the only other one we have is Spinosaurus, and that one's weird as hell. And I'm like, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, The only thing I can think of is that the arms are not quite as robust as I would like. Yeah. They don't seem that far off from the skeletal. No, I don't think they're far off. I think they're a little small, though. Yeah, It's kind of remarkable how... You mean small as in, like, lengthwise, or small as in, like, not jacked enough? Um, small as in, like, not jacked enough. Like, just proportionally, That's they should be more point. robust. That's a yeah, good point. They're about the right length, length okay. but yeah. Yeah, because the bones are, Huge. like, the humerus on Sukumimus is big. Oh, it's yeah. gigantic. It's, like, as big as a torso. And I'd personally guess they'd be a little bit longer. So, one, one of the things that really strikes me about this model of Sukumimus is that this is I think I could speak for everybody here, the best like 3D representation of a Spinosaur I've ever seen um, and like one of the things that this really nails or, or at least in a video game uh, one of the things that this really nails is that how absolutely narrow that skull is. And that's one of the things that I think that most media (laughs) doesn't really capture that much is that theropod skulls kind of as a rule aren't wide. It's essentially like, uh, I remember I I chatted with a friend once that like a lot of reconstructions of a lot of other theropod dinosaurs, their skulls end up being way wider uh, than they, actually were if you're looking at the fossil at the fossils and i think that that's a bit of the the t-rexification of theropod dinosaurs that especially we'll talk about that with baryonyx but like this guy it has it's scissors Fuck you games on your phone. just say that <laughs> I'll have to send. I got a really good pick. We have a cast. I say we as if I'm still affiliated there, but there's a cast of Sukumimus on display at the Dino Discovery Museum in Kenosha, and there's you can get a head-on angle of it, and it's like the most ridiculous thing. I, it's it's reminding me of, and I know I'll bring this up when whenever we talk about Barry, um, but if you guys haven't seen Digital Ducks like redo of that mm-hmm. scene in Fallen Kingdom with the Baryonyx with the scientifically accurate Baryonyx using Julius Chutney's original uh, illustration of it as a reference. It is night and day when they are side by side when it opens its mouth and roars that like this thing has a jaw that's this wide and it is unsettling how like genuinely it's like it has a pair of scissors for a face. It's, it's so bizarre. And, and I will say, even though this is kind of the T-Rexification of a lot of dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurs in general, the back of the skull is wide. The rostrum is always quite narrow, proportionally. I mean, like, T-Rex is a huge animal. It's wide, you know, in absolute terms. But proportionally, you know, you get... It, it's not like the... I think a lot of media just kind of makes it like a very blocky thing. They don't have a good sense for how it looks in three dimensions. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Jurassic World Velociraptors are a great example. Like, they, they're they just built like cubes. Um, even Jurassic Park Velociraptors are a little bit like that. Um, Reject anatomy, become cube. Exactly. That's what the freaking they do in the old Dune movie, as I learned, for the shields. Yeah. They become cube. <laughs> that was un- unworldly. I love that movie. Oh, they paid VFX artists by the Polygon back in the day. Uh, yeah, apparently. 
man, that poor guy must have like made a whole seven dollars from that scene. See, and now if he was working today, he could have yeah. made a whole nine. Unionize. Yeah. Unionize. So should we rank Sukumimus? I think we should rank. Let's yeah. rank this beautiful creature. This N- not to sound like the guy in Oppenheimer who's like, stop discussing leftist politics in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> Oppy, keep it out of my lab. Here we are in the species viewer. Let's rank the animal. Yay. Okay. Well, it's great. I love it. I really, really like spinosaurs. There's, there's my secret. Um, I think they're very cool. I wish people weren't so weird about them. Um, no, it's, it's, it's great. Really, it's a good, huh? They're cool looking. So people I know. They're really neat animals. They're really cool. They're really big. They've got interesting faces. They're wonderful. And and yeah, obviously, as we've said, um, this whole video, this model is perfect. It's wonderful. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I'm bothering saying anything else. It's S for Sukumimus, obviously. Nice. So I'm a big fan of Futurama. Um, and every time yeah. I see this animal... I think of the gag in one of the, like, kind of alternate timeline, what it could have been episodes, where Professor Farnsworth (laughs) has invented the thing longer, which is just a glove with essentially a pool cue in the index finger so that you can poke things from about three feet away. Um, (laughs) Which I love. I love all the scenes of him just missing what he's trying to touch. (laughs) I I joke about the thing longer literally any time I have to do anything from a distance. Um, this is the face longer. I love the, I I love just how stupid it looks in the face. (laughs) I've never thought about, like, I I don't think I've ever seen a, like a good realistic depiction in 3D like this of a Spinosaur before these games. And I was just like, my God, its head really did look like that. It really would have been, he, they lived like this. Best view from the side. The eyes are all the way back there. And it's just a nose coming forward. Yeah, I, I just love it. I, 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 you know, I say that it looks kind of goofy, and I think it does, but it's also just a beautifully done, very elegant design. It feels like a living animal. And it feels like a living animal that's kind of pretty. Um, the colors are perfect. I think the patterns are all great. Um, S tier. I'm going to echo what my good friends and colleagues have said here in that I think I'm actually I'm going to go a little bit further in the that I think this is one of if not the best designed animal in the entire game. I think that every single aspect of it banger. Um the model is great. The colors are great. The patterns are great. Even the alternate colors are great. Like, like true, Julius Chutney has a time machine, went back in time, found a Sukumimus, and then perfectly replicated exactly what it would have looked and uh, looked like here. And Frontier also went with him and perfectly replicated all of its behaviors. Um, but also, all of the uh, alternate colors are awesome. Like, some of them are a little oversaturated for my taste. But you can make some beautiful colors on this thing. It's absolutely incredible. And I think I'm going to petition for this thing to be an H tier. I'm glad you've done that. Because I was going to if no one else did. Interesting. That, that is fair. And I am amenable to that. I go, I go out of my way to include this in every park I make. It's social animation is one of the best in the whole game. It lays down when it drinks. It lays down properly. Like it's 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 a perfect being with an incredibly long nose. Like Christopher Moltisan. <laughs> I understand the H appeal. However, in my personal vibe H is most is, is, is almost exclusive exclusively restricted to little guys who do silly and fun things. True. I mean I look understand. at the other look at the other things that we have in H tier, like Shonisaurus. That's I didn't vote I think I put an S for Shonisaurus. 
but I no can't remember. little guy shown his source. But an archelon also satisfies the guy criteria by being yeah. a big round guy. This is pointy it looks guy. Like a penguin. No, no, that more like that. This is a dude. This is not a guy. And this is an S. Correct. Easily, but I cannot. This does not elicit the same feeling in me that Sinosauropteryx and Homalocephaly do, and so I cannot put them in H. But it is a absolutely excellent design, and when I make my parks, I just do a different color for Baryonyx. Where I'm like, it's Baryonyx. <laughs> so, I said in the beginning that someone obviously cared a lot about this animal when they made it, and I I fully believe that. I don't know if one particular designer was in charge of all of the Julius Chutney designs and reincorporating them, but I I, I think. It goes beyond just using what is a, a great piece of paleo art as the base. And and it moves into something else. There's so much care put into this in terms of making it look like the real animal, in terms of, as Scott was saying, making its behaviors all very in-depth. It's got, I think, maybe the longest social animation I've seen. It fishes in a way that's plausible to the biology of the animal from what we know. Um, it makes the sound design is incredibly good. For whatever reason... I even think this, like the texturing on the skin, seems to have been given more detail. Like this looks like it came from another game, even compared to some of the outstanding designs from this game. Like compared to designs I really like, it's it it seems different in a way that like accelerates it and puts it ahead of the pack. I don't understand how that happened, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that it did. This, like, looks like it could be in a game where scientific rigor is one of the, like, grounding parts of it, like a prehistoric kingdom. Like, this could easily be the prehistoric kingdom Sucubinus that we're looking at. But it's not. It's the Jurassic World Evolution 2, which is pretty remarkable. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, so much care was put into every, every bit of this design, and it's realized so well, I don't think it can be anything other than H tier. I think this, as Scott was saying, this may be the best... Of, of the non-DLC designs, this may be the best dinosaur in the game in terms of realizing holistically what the animal is in a way that, like, is cool. Sure. <sighs> no, I'm going to stay by my S. I'm, I'm also going to stay with my S, but I, I agree with everything you've said. Just I the have a, design. I have an idea. I have an appeasement. There should be another tier in between... S and H, which is just Sukumimus tier. No. Because it is obviously better than everything else, but it is not a little guy. We could put I, it at the top of S tier. But H is hero, right? Hero, not yeah. little guy. Not well, little he's guy. not. I wouldn't say he's a hero. This man, I don't trust this man. This is not a hero. Like, this he's is cool. Villain. This is not yeah. a hero to you? Yeah. No. <laughs> this is not the face of someone who rushes to fight crime? No, it's got horse energy. <laughs> this is true. Ooh, that's very interesting. <laughs> H for horse. I guess then the H, H would horse. be appropriate. I could see H for horse. I, I could would not, be okay and I'm honestly kind of baffled we're still stuck on no, that. that. That's fine. I, I'm just advocating for the result. That you're I advocating for silliness. I will too. I, I will. I will lower my vote to prevent this from happening if I must. <laughs> Top of no, S -tier. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay with top of S tier. Is everybody okay with that? Fine. No, but that's how democracy works. So <laughs> that's how democracy works. Okay. But I'm not okay with it. This is how democracy dies. <laughs> Hashtag not my tier. <laughs> I'm an H tier truther. It, it's, it, it's my tier. Um, unfortunately, with that, it brings me an immense amount of sadness and pain to say that Sukumimus is unjustly relegated to the absolute top of S tier. Sure. I can accept that. Hello everyone from the end of the Sukumimus video. Hope you enjoyed that one. It was probably not short because we had a lot to say because it's a really <laughs> cool animal and because we're the skeleton crew and we don't do anything short. Well, are you guys ready to see what our next animal is? Even though our beloved Jimbo couldn't be here for the wheel spin. As we spin 
Spin. That, that wheel. 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 Round and round and round it goes. Where will it land? More like Werosaurus will it land? I'm oh, going to no. leave. Oh. Um. <laughs> 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 it's not Stegosaurus. Hey! So, everybody, tune in next week for a video about Wuherosaurus. Is that how it's said? Sure. I haven't known how to say that in the entirety of my life as a child who was interested in dinosaurs and as an adult who studies dinosaurs for a living. I thought it was Wuherosaurus for the longest time. It sounds uh, like we should watch our video on Wuherosaurus. It sounds like it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, tune in next week for our video about Wuherosaurus. Before we go, just a little note for you. Um, please keep in mind that we are doing a fundraiser for the SVP Futures Award this October. This is a, um, a scholarship or grant given out by the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology to support summer undergraduate research by people from uh, communities that are historically um, underrepresented. Under yes, sorry. Uh, uh, historically underrepresented in the sciences and paleontology in particular. This is a really important thing. Um, we hope that you can join us for not one, but two fundraising live streams in which we'll try to benefit this organization and this grant to the tune of $10,000. Please help us. <laughs> um, also, we're going to be doing a panel at the Virtual Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting in late October. We're going to be talking about behind the scenes type stuff with our ethos and kind of strategy and uh, con concept behind the skeleton crew and everything we want this channel to be. Um, so if you're registered for the virtual SVP meeting, you should come to that. If you're not registered for the virtual SVP meeting, you should consider it if you can. But if you absolutely can't, a recording of the panel discussion will eventually be going up on the SVP YouTube channel. Hello, everybody. Editing Scott here. Allow me to jump in real quick as I say my deepest and heartfelt thanks to all of our absolutely incredible and ever-growing list of patrons. We genuinely couldn't do this without you guys. You can see their names scrolling over here as I, for I believe the first time, gesture to the correct side of the screen. <laughs> I promise I'm learning. But I wanted to further thank by name our patrons that are supporting us at the Gorgosaurus tier and above. And that would be Benjamin Seepser, nickname 3110, Philip Fico, Andrew Niddle, Dana Kyrus, Florida Man, King Zazu, Max Ironpaw, Noah Rico, Riley Shiro, and Wheat. So, allow me to let you guys go back to the rest of the crew as we wrap up this appropriately long video on this appropriately long critter. Thank you, guys. Thank you to all of our patrons. Thank you to all of our viewers. Like, comment, subscribe. Do the things YouTubers tell you to do. Um, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Um, does anybody know what Sukumimus means? <laughs> the suck mimic. It means... <laughs> Oh, that was, that's not very that's not very nice. It means the crocodile that's mimic. Minus. All you guys were saying before we started this video, we were supposed to strategize what we were going to talk about, and you spent ten minutes each saying "suck mimic." Uh, Amelia, you were away for much of the strategizing meeting, so. <laughs> go on. Sorry, you go ahead, Scott. Okay, uh, I was just going to say I? super. F is, well, uh, okay, uh, fine, fine. You go, 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 go. Rock paper scissors, ready? Rock paper scissors, let's go. No, wait, I won. <laughs> I, you know, I win. <laughs> he can't read. He doesn't recognize shapes. We gotta send this, <laughs> I have shape lexia. We determined this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott, go ahead.